Okay, so I've connected the ring circuit into figure of eight, but before I did that, I did end-to-end -end measurements. And as you can see, I've put these resistor values in. So each leg of the ring is got a resistance. Line conductors, the resistance between each socket is one ohms. And because the CPC is smaller, for ease, I've put two ohms. Okay, so we can see how it all adds up, right? I've then recorded these figures up here. So R1 is seven ohms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. R2 is 14 ohms. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So if I was here, and let's just imagine that these aren't connected at the moment. Right. So these aren't connected. If I do my end to end, again, remember, I stick this onto the um, low resistance ohm meter, low resistance ohm meter, should I say. I check that the leads are nulled, which they are. The gate is closed. I've pulled them apart. The gate is open. I know my testers are working correctly. So I measure this here. What's happening is the machine is putting current down the um, the conductors, electron flow is happening. So the electrons are flowing through the circuit. The machine then picks up the electron flow, divides the voltage by the current, gives us resistance, okay? So I test between here and here, I get seven ohms. I test between here and here, I get 14 ohms. I'm happy that I've got a full connection, okay? I then configure this into the, the figure of eight, okay? So that line conductor from leg two goes into the CPC of leg one. And the CPC of leg two goes into the line con conductor of leg one. So hopefully you can see that crosses over there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through the resistances at each socket and how we can expect the same. I've calculated it over here. So I've done seven ohms plus 14 ohms, okay? Because I've effectively got two uh, resistors in parallel. It gives me 21 ohms. I then take that 21 ohms, divide it by four, because at each point I'm gonna be testing four separate peak parts of the circuit, which I've drawn up here. Okay, and I'll explain more of that in detail in a minute. So 21 ohms divide by four, and that gives me this magical number of 5.25 ohms, which I'm expecting to hit at every socket. Now, before we go on, you guys need to appreciate what is happening with this machine, okay? So when I'm connecting into the circuit, the machine is putting current, it's putting, a, it's putting current through the circuit, which is causing electrons to flow through the circuit, okay? Now, when I test at this point here, because it is equal, I'm getting current flow going this way, but I'm also getting current flow going the other way, okay? Because of that, because of the electron flow, it's not an exact science as such. You know, there's different properties within the machine, etc., cetera, um, or the copper. When I come to work out up here, I will get slightly different numbers to this, but when I work it out mathematically, you'll see that I still get the same result, okay? So just bear that in mind. Also bear in mind that I've only been doing this for a year, and as I'm teaching this to you guys, my knowledge is increasing, and I'm forming opinions and knowledge. That knowledge might be slightly wrong, but I'm putting this out there because then other people will comment on that knowledge and we will all benefit as a result, okay? But ultimately, to start off with the basics, you need to just know that what is happening with this machine. When I'm testing for resistance, the machine is putting current into the circuit and then recording what's coming back, okay? Simple Ohm's law. Voltage divided by current gives resistance. Right, okay, so let's start. First of all, I'm gonna start at this first socket here. So I put my testers between live and uh, earth, live, so R1 and R2, and I get a reading, I get a resistance, okay? Now what happens is, 
part of the electrons are going to go this way, so I get a one ohm resistance. So I'm just going to put up here one ohm. As that continues, sorry, I just need to move this out of the way because my leads keep getting caught up on that. As my as the um, as the electron flow goes through that circuit, it then goes on to the R2, and then I'm picking up two ohms, four ohms, six ohms, eight ohms, ten ohms, twelve ohms before I come back to this point here. Okay, so up here I put twelve ohms. Right, on this leg, back this way, I've got two ohms to this point. So I put up here two ohms. As it continues through the circuit, I then get one ohm, two ohms, three ohms, four ohms, five ohms, six ohms, before I get back to this testing point here. So up here, I put one, two, three, four, five, six. So far so good, hopefully this is making sense and you're following what I'm doing. Now over here, I can add these up. Because we've got resistors in parallel, I can add those up. And we've got one ohm plus 12 ohms, 13 ohms. Two ohms plus six ohms is eight ohms. Okay. I add those two together, gives me 21 ohms, which is what I'm looking for over here. And then I can divide that by four and I get my 5.25 ohms. That's what I get here. Now, you're probably looking at that and thinking, well, hang on a minute. We've done resistors in parallel at college. If we put that into the reciprocals of, we're going to get a different figure. So if I do that now, I'll just bring it over to the calculator. Calculate it so you guys can see what's going on. You're not going to be able to see that. Um, oh, that's typical. Okay, I'll put that into the calculator. So I get 13 to the reciprocal 1 plus 8 to the reciprocal 1. I reciprocal the answer and I get 4.9 reoccurring 5, 2, 3. So rounded up, I get 5 ohms. That's not quite the same here, okay? but you have to take into account that electron flow is happening in all directions, okay? Through all the resistors. Um, so I'm happy that that is close enough worked out, okay? But when you come to do it on site and you're actually recording it with your machine, it will fluctuate slightly, but it will be within a tolerance of 0 0.05 ohms, and we're well within that, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to do it as we go through each circuit. We'll check it at each step of the way. and Hopefully we are around this figure, give or take 0 0.05 ohms. Okay, next one. I'm just rubbing figures out. Okay, so we're going to come to this socket next. Again, I check my leads and node. Machine switched off because I've been talking for so long. I check that they're node, they're node, and I test at this point between R1 and R2. Now, if I come back down this way, I've got a one ohm resistor, two ohm resistor before I go into the CPC. So up here, I put two ohms. That then goes into the CPC, so where are we? We're here, and then we've got two, four, six, eight, ten before we get back to this socket. So up here I put ten ohms. At this point, back to the board, I've got two ohms, four ohms, so I record four here. Okay, and then Following that through, so 2 ohms, 4 ohms, I've then got 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, 4 ohm, 5 ohms, back to that point, okay, so 5 ohms. I then add those up, because again, resistors in parallel, we can add those up to create two resistors. So 2 plus 10 ohms, 12 ohms, 4 plus 5 ohms, 
9 ohms. Okay. Get the calculator. Well, in fact, I don't need to add that up on a calculator to know that that equals 21 ohms. Okay. So let's just check it on the calculator to see the reciprocals. So 12 ohms to reciprocal of 1 plus 9 ohms to the reciprocal of 1 equals, and then I'll reciprocal the answer. And that gives me 5.1 reoccurring four. So a bit closer. Still well within that tolerance of 0 0.05. Okay? So I'm happy that that works. Right. The next socket. Okay, so we've done this socket, we've done this socket, I'm now at this socket. Check. Leads and old. I test between here and here. I'll come back this way first. So from here to the connector block, I've got one ohm, two ohm, three ohms. So up here, I write three ohms. After that, that comes into the CPC. And then I've got two ohms, four ohms, six ohms, eight ohms, which I write up here. So from here back to the connector block, I've got two ohms, four ohms, six ohms. And from that point on, I've then got one ohm, two ohm, three ohm, four ohms. Okay. We add those up, 8 plus 3 is 11, 6 plus 4 is 10. Add those up, we've got 21 ohms, so I know that I should be getting around this figure. I do it for the reciprocals. Um, so 11 to the reciprocal of 1 plus 10 to the reciprocal of 1 equals, I reciprocal the answer. 5.238. So we're, we're almost bang on the money now at this point. And that's because we're almost halfway through the circuit. Okay? Um, electron flow is equal on all sides. That's my interpretation of it anyway. If anyone else wants to tell me that I'm wrong, that's fine. Um, but come up with the answer, don't just tell me that I'm wrong. Okay, at this point then, let's do these. Don't forget, when you're out on site, you will get slightly different readings at each socket, which explains exactly what's going on here if we do the reciprocal method. Um, and our tolerance is 0 0.05, so as long as we're well within that and it's on the ring, we're okay. So we've done this socket, we've done this socket, we've done this socket, we're now here, and effectively what you're going to find is we're going back around the ring, the, the numbers are going to match exactly what's going on, but I will go through it just to prove a point. So I test here and here. Back this way, I've got a 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, 4 ohm resistor. That carries on through the CPC, 2 ohm, 4 ohm, 6 ohms. So as you see, that was the opposite of what it was before. These figures were down here last time, flipped over. And then from this point, from this point back to the board, I've got two, four, six, eight ohms. Going through into this line conductor, one, two, three. Okay, and as you saw before, it just flipped over because we're going back through the circuit now. So at this point, we've got 10, and this point, we've got 11. Whereas before, it was the other way around. But we've gone over the halfway point. This point here is exactly halfway through the circuit, okay? Right, again, 10 ohms plus 11 ohms equals 21 ohms. We know if we do the reciprocal method, it works out as well within our tolerance of 0 0.05. So hopefully you guys are getting a hang of this now. So we've done that one, this one, this one. We're on this one now, 
I want you guys to tell me what you think is going to be coming on. Okay, so I'm going to test at this point here. I want you to count the resistance back to the connector block in the line conductors. And I want you to follow it through on the CPC till you get back to this point here. Okay, so I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. Okay, so you should have worked out that coming back from this point, we've got one, two, three, four ohms. I think I've already done, oh, I've already done that one, sorry. From this, scratch that. We've already done that socket. From this socket, sorry. So from this point, back, I'll give you a few minutes to work that out. So what you want to do is you want to start with the line conductor, measure it back to here. Record the result, then the CPC back to this point, record the result, and then do the same with the CPC this way, record the result, and then the line conductor back to here. So hopefully you guys have realised that, um, so line conductor, one, two, three, four, five ohms, goes into the CPC, and we've got two, four. Line conductor this way, one, two. Oh. Actually, hang on, confused myself. Oh yeah, that's right. And then coming back into the CPC, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten ohms. We add those up. So we've got nine, and we've got twelve equals 21, we'd work that out with a reciprocal and we would be within this figure by 0.05, perfectly acceptable. Okay, last socket. Now hopefully you're all getting the hang of this. So if you look at this last socket, I want you to put the values up here and work it out for me. I'll just give you a couple of minutes. So from this socket, count the resistance back through the line conductor so it connects to the CPC, and we'll record that up there. Then follow the CPC round until it comes back to that point that you're testing at, record that there. Then you do it back this way through the line conductor, record that there, and then into the CPC back to that point, record that there. Okay. Right. So from here, line conductor, I've only got one ohm. CPC, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. CPC back to here, two ohms. And then into the line conductor, one, two, three, four, five, six ohms. Add those up. So one plus twelve, thirteen. 6 plus 2, 8, equals 21 ohms, divide that by 4, 5.25, if we do the reciprocal method, it's about 4.9 reoccurring, but well within our 0.05 tolerance. So hopefully you guys have now got an understanding of what's happening when you're testing a ring, what's actually going on, and why we get the same resistance at each socket. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset all these values, and I'm going to do a video on what happens to those resistances when they're connected up, when this isn't connected into a figure of eight, when it's connected up incorrectly. I hope this video has been of some use to you. And uh, as always, any questions or queries, answer, you know, put them in the, um, in the uh, comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. At the end of this series of videos on testing ring circuits, I am gonna have a question and answer um, video I might even do that live. I've seen some of the E5 guys doing live videos. I might actually do that live if anyone wants to have, have, give that a go. Okay, take care and speak soon.